Hi, thanks for joining me talking about the formation of ions in this video. Now, if you change the number of neutrons, you make isotopes. If you change the number of protons, you get a new element because protons define the element. So that would be nuclear chemistry and nuclear reactions. If you change the number of electrons, we have the formation of ions. Um, so protons minus electrons are equal to the charge. So when you have ions, my protons are not equal to my number of electrons. But here's the key. You don't form ions by changing protons. Protons change the element. You only make ions by changing the number of electrons present. So if we lose electrons, we end up with more protons and electrons. There's an excess positive charge, okay? Because protons minus electrons um, would be a positive number. And those are called cations. So if you watch how I'm writing the name, C a positive ion. Alicia Marusic taught me that one. I was like, oh, brilliant, love it. So C, a positive cation. And I wanted to show you my cat Nala just to remind you that cations are positive, just like my Nala is. Uh-oh, she doesn't want to let me go. All right, Nala. Now let's look at the negative ones. If I gain electrons, remember it's all about the electrons, so if electrons are gained, now I have an excess negative, and that's called an anion. So watch as I write it, a negative ion. Okay, and remember, we're only adding and subtracting electrons. Uh, a lot of standardized tests will have questions. How did it become a plus three aluminum? And they'll say, oh, we added protons. Yeah, no, you didn't, because if you add protons, it's no longer aluminum. Okay, so um, I like to think of it as becoming more negative or less negative. So if it's more negative, we're adding or gaining electrons. If it's less negative, then that's a loss of electrons. I don't like to think of it as more negative and more positive. If you think of it as more negative, gain electrons, less negative, loss of electrons, I think you'll have a little bit uh, better luck. So more negative and less negative. Okay, so hopefully that's a good introduction for that. So let's take a look at some examples of ions. If I have an element with 20 protons and 18 electrons, okay, then 20 protons minus 18 electrons gives me a plus 2 charge, and so I have to look at the element that has 20 protons, because remember, it's the protons that define my element. And element 20 is calcium. So I'm going to write calcium 20. You don't have to do that. It didn't ask you. It just said identify the element and determine the charge. So it has a 2 plus charge. I don't know the mass number, so I'm not going to do a whole nuclear symbol. So sulfide ion has a charge of negative 2. We put sulfur to negative. So that means protons minus electrons is equal to a negative 2. Well, if you look up sulfur, it's element 16. So 16 minus electrons is a negative 2. So it has 16 protons and it has 18 electrons. So that's how you, you know, kind of uh, do the logic to figure out the charges and protons and particles. Okay, now this is a little bit of a memorization uh, tool right now as you move forward in your understanding of the structure of the atom. I think you'll understand the why of this. 
But I want to look at some of the common cation and anions. Now, metals are losers of electrons by and large. They lose electrons, they become less negative due to that loss. Group one always loses one to become plus one. Group two always loses two to become plus two. There's some representative metals over on the right hand side and they have multiple charges associated with them. And I think once you get into modeling the atom, you'll understand how those ions form. Now, I like to do something I call the silver steps. A student at Collin College and I uh, kind of came up with this, and it, and it provides a nice pattern. So I always say the more you can conceptualize, the less you have to memorize. So you find silver on the periodic table and form a staircase of one, two, three, and you end up with one element at plus one, two elements at plus two, and three at plus three. So one, two, three. Uh, I think that's a little bit easier way than kind of doing the grunt memorization. But these are uh, some of the common ions that you will be coming uh, across for cations. Now, anions are the little triangle in the upper right-hand corner, and nonmetals, those are your nonmetals, and they are winners in the electron game and they gain electrons to become anions. Um, group 18 does nothing because those are the noble gases and they're fairly non-reactive. Then we go group 17 is negative 1, and if we're going right to left, we'd have from group 17, negative 1 to negative 2 to negative 3 to negative 4. So if you can start uh, wrapping your mind around that pattern, I think it'll make a lot more sense when you get to the structure of the atom. So, all right, hopefully this helped you out a bit, and you have a good day as you learn a little bit more chemistry.